what's up everybody you are here with Miranda Evans your favorite unfiltered motivator and we are on episode 8 of motivation with me so as some of you may know I have started my child abuse series blog on MirandaEvans.com I was a blogger way before I was a vlogger and I was an author before I was a blogger so I went author blogger blogger now I do all three so if you have not checked out my blog um, the first one is named unfortunately it starts at home please read that before watching this video and it'll make more sense so I said I was gonna follow up with videos for my child abuse uh, child sex abuse awareness series or yeah awareness series we're gonna we're gonna talk awareness because we want to change the stigma and the statistics of child sexual abuse so I am you know just to give just to give a brief excuse my wet fresh wash and go here I got going on let's hope these earrings don't fall out this time if you see my last video then you'll get it um so on my blog I stated you know unfortunately it starts at home which it does because that can go into many factors it can start with the family dynamic so for instance in my personal you know story my dad died when I was 11 to domestic violence so my mom had you know multiple boyfriends and then she got married to my stepdad who you know was my abuser when I was a child he molested and fondled me when I was 12 one on 13 all the way up until I was almost 14 before I cried out for help and said anything about it so sometimes it starts at home because you know you have your mother may bring in a guy or a new man or your uh, dad may bring in a new woman because child abuse isn't just is just sorry isn't just girls it's girls and boys it's children period so your family dynamics the way you were raised like I came up in a family where you know what happens at home stays at home and let's keep it in the family type situation and most you know families grow up like that like that's in our culture um, the minority culture is to not say anything and let's keep it in the family and we don't want our family secrets or family business out there and you know when you're a child you believe that and you listen to whatever your parents tell you to do so you think that they're right I know me specifically I love my mom so much and wanted to protect her like literally <clears throat> you know even to this day I'm a natural p protector um, that's why I call myself the black superwoman because if you know me you know that I'm naturally protective if you read my first book you'll know I fought for my best friends I went to jail I take in kids like I'm just a natural protector and you know I've been like that since I was younger especially after I lost my father because it was like my mom was all I had left so all I wanted to do was protect my mom and make my mom happy I didn't really care about anything else it was like my mom was happy then I'm happy or whatever but as a child you're looking from the outside in so you don't really know what love and happiness looks like you kind of just make that assumption and to make that make sense I have to tell you my story in order for that for you to understand so I was molested and it took me almost a year before I finally said something and this story is in my book except in my first book in troubled I masked uh, my step stepfather's identity to protect my mom and to protect my sister my stepsister who was his daughter because I assumed that she didn't know that her dad was a pedophile and I didn't want people coming after my mother for marrying him and still you know to this day staying married to him so in an effort to again be a protector I masked his identity now some people figured it out some people knew who he was like all of my friends all of my family my um my mom's friends like most people knew like his family didn't know but a lot of people knew because from when it happened like from back in the day and I remember like 
uh, I, I cried out to my cousin, my older cousin, Ashley, when we were kids. And I remember afterwards, like, you know, my, my friend's moms wouldn't let them, like, you couldn't come to my house. You couldn't stay in my house. You couldn't spend the night in my house. Like, you, there, I couldn't have my friends over. My cousin couldn't come over. So it's like I had to go to them because nobody, like, who wants to send their child in the house with a pedophile? Okay. I wouldn't want my child in the house. And, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I'm getting off topic because there's so many elements to this. But just a side note, I really hope I'm not a helicopter parent because of what I went through. But I agree with parents who don't let their children spend a night at someone's house when there's a man in the house. And I'm probably going to do the same thing. Like, it's just a safety precaution. <laughs> you know, and I would be I wouldn't be offended if it happened vice versa. If my daughter's friends couldn't come to my house, if my husband was in the house, like, you know, it's just you never know. So a lot of parents don't want to take their chance. And I probably will not take that chance because of the situation that I was put in. So backtrack. I told my cousin and I promised her, you know, you got to remember, we're teenagers like we're. 13 years old, she's 14, and so it was like, you know, I gotta tell you something, but promise me you're not gonna say nothing, and I'm scared I'm gonna get in trouble, like, I don't wanna get in trouble, and, you know, like, this is, I don't know what to do, I just, like, my whole thing was, yes, I'm about to fix my bra on this YouTube channel, <laughs> my whole thing was, I didn't wanna get in trouble, because I thought that I did something wrong, and I thought, like, you know, maybe it was supposed to happen or I don't know. Like when you're a child and when you're a teenager, it's like you don't really process things. So you don't really know what's going on. Like, yeah, I knew about sex. First of all, I didn't lose my virginity until I was 14 because I was scared my stepdad was going to rape me. So in the book, I tell the story about me losing my virginity first before I tell the story of the molestation. So the timeline of my book is not in order. So I don't want people to confuse that you know, for various reasons. You know, I was molested before I lost my virginity. And I was troubled after I was molested. So, you know, because unfortunately, my family and my abuser have used the excuse, well, you know, Miranda was troubled and she was going through a lot and she had mental issues and she was depressed. And, you know, yeah, I attempted suicide. Yeah, I was depressed. And yeah, I was wild and out. I was disrespectful. I was troubled. I was all that. But what people fail to realize is I wasn't that person until after I was abused. OK, so don't make that mistake or use that excuse of me being a troubled teenager because did you ever stop to think of why I became the way I was? That wasn't me acting out just being a disrespectful teen. That was a cry for help because I was abused. And two things happen to abuse victims. They either shut down sexually, which means they don't want anybody touching them. They don't want, you know, they don't have boyfriends. They don't want like this, like, don't touch me, like back away. They freak out or they become over sexual. They become promiscuous. They because they believe that, OK, this is what I'm supposed to do. And as a teenager and as a child, I thought that. I was supposed to give my body away. I already did. So that's what I'm supposed to do as a girl. Like if someone asks to have sex, I'm supposed to say, yeah, especially if I'm in a relationship, because my thing is, that's my boyfriend. I have to please him. So I got that. I have to have sex with him. And that comes from me not knowing. First of all, nobody ever explains to me what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like. You know, my aunt did the best she could with it, but I've never had like a representation of a healthy relationship except for my grandparents that raised me, Mill and June. They were married. They never fought. Like even when they fought, it was like that cute old people fighting. So that was my representation of love. But that was older, old school, like we came from Southern Louisiana, moved to Houston, got married at 18 type love. So that wasn't relatable at my age. Like to me, that was just old school love. So I never had a proper example of what love and happiness and healthy relationships was supposed to look like. And my mom didn't teach me about healthy relationships. First of all, my mom is not a talker. 
Okay, she's not a talker. She never was affectionate. I got my affection from my grandparents that passed away. And my maternal grandmother isn't affectionate. Like, you know, it's not, we don't do that hugging and I love you type situation. Like, no, we're not doing that. And my mom had the sex conversation with me because... <laughs> I'm not going to put it out there like that. But let's just say I saw something I didn't want to see. And so it was kind of forced. Like, it wasn't like, oh, let me sit, sit you down and tell you about sex. It was like, no. I witnessed something. I thought she was hurt. Then it's like, okay, well, now I have no choice but to explain to her what sex is. And I think I might have been like 11 or something like that. So I didn't really learn about sex and, you know, um, what body parts, you know, now we teach our children like these body parts are off limits and don't let anybody touch you in your, in your, uh, private areas and things like that. Like now our children are more educated and my goal is to make them even more educated by passing our resources, explaining my story, hopefully other people explaining their story. So. Yes, y'all know I'm an activist already. So this is why I'm starting this child abuse sex series because it's going to not only tell my story but give you resources and help and signs and statistics and things like that so you can help prevent child sex abuse. Like we need to start really preventing it. You know, I already fight for sexual abuse anyway. So this is just something under the umbrella because I was raped at 16. So I've had it both ways i've had it where it was extended and it was just fondling and i've had it where it was a, a, a brutal rape so i already fight for sexual abuse so now i'm going to start fighting for child sex abuse and that took time it took time for me to get to this point because i wasn't strong enough yet i didn't think people would listen to me like i didn't have enough confidence in myself and it's like when I told my story, I still filtered it a little bit. And then you have to realize coming from a family who, when I, when I made the outcry, didn't really defend me is intimidation because I'm now having to fight the battle between my family and justice, like my family and what's right, my family and activism. So that held me back for a long time because I'm like, all right, if I say something, I could potentially lose my family. Like I could potentially be by myself. You know, my grandparents have passed. Most of the people that were really close to me and that I really, really love, like dearly in my heart, like me, everything to me have passed away except for my mom. So it's like I was scared. Like I wasn't prepared to lose my family over this. But I got to a point where I was like, you know what, why am I protecting my family and why am I not speaking my truth when they didn't protect me first, you know? And I think the problem with that is you, you like, it's, it's so complex because it depends on the family. And it's like everybody I tell the story to is like, wait, what? Your mom did what? Your family said what? Like, you know, it's it's surprising because you expect for your parent or your or your family to speak up. And legally, because my uncle on my dad's side is an officer, legally, regardless if it's true or not, when a child comes to you and says, I'm being abused, you legally have to report that and let the investigators and law enforcement decide whether it's true or not. That's not your decision to make, period. You have to report it. You can get into legal trouble for not reporting child abuse. If you knowingly don't report child abuse, especially as a parent or a family member, then you can face legal consequences for that because you, it's not up to you to make that choice. And what my mom did was, she made me make the choice. So it was kind of like, oh, what you want to do? Like, you want to file a police report or, you know, what do we do now? And I'm just like, I don't know. What's a police report? Like, I'm 13. I'm 14. I don't know what a police. What? Like, I don't even know what all that means. Like, why are you even asking me this? I don't know. Like, you know, and it's. I've heard, well, your story changed multiple times. Of course it did. I was a teenager. What do you expect me to say? Like, 
do you want me to go in detail? Like, do you want me to give you, like, all the disgusting details? Because I will, and I'm going to in my blog. So if you're sensitive, please don't watch my videos and don't read my blog. I should have said that in the beginning, but don't read my stuff because y'all know I'm unfiltered. And in order for you to understand, I have to give you the details because it goes into the certain signs that you can look for in child sex abuse situations. So, you know, unfortunately, I had a bad experience with it, and I've had to deal with that for the past 14 years. And people, you know, who don't know or who found out ever since I came out with the article from last year where I named my stepfather who by the name. Because people should know. And it's going to come out soon anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm not trying to be, you know, I've been blamed by my family for being like revengeful or like, it's not like I'm trying to come after people like, oh my God, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, um, I'm trying to get revenge or I'm trying to persecute y'all and I'm trying to take y'all down and I'm angry. So I'm going to do all that. No, I'm not angry guys. I promise I'm not angry. I, I wouldn't even be able to do this if I was angry. If I was angry and unforgiving, there's no way I would have been able to stay in the house with someone who molested me, go to college, go to college again, write books, start a youth nonprofit, start a for profit, like do motivational speaking and tell my story in public. Like there's no way it, I would have been able to done that if I was harboring unforgiveness because uh, when you don't forgive somebody it affects you it doesn't affect that person so we need to forgive people for us and I forgave a long time ago like literally right after it happened when I realized nobody was going to do anything about it and people were assuming I was dreaming and making this story up I was like alright well sh shit fuck it y'all you know, I can only fight for so long. So it's like, all right, whatever. Don't nobody believe me. Don't nobody care. So I'm going to deal with it because it was either go to CPS or stay with my mom. And I love my mommy. I still love my mommy to this day. Like to this day, that's all I have. So I don't want people to not realize that I love my mother, which is why I held this in for so long. But at some point, you have to accept the consequences and face what you did. You have to face your mistakes. And regardless of how many times you apologize, regardless of like even you you have no remorse, you have no repentance over what you did to this day. To this day. Like still to this day, you still feel the same way you did 14 years ago. So what what am I holding back for? Why am I not telling my truth? Why am I only telling half the truth? No, I'm going to tell my whole truth, nothing but the truth. Like, it's time. Because I can't go and tell people or tell my teenagers, I got girls. Like, I can't go tell them if something happened to you or if you get sexually assaulted, you need to tell your parents, you need to tell me, you need to tell the cops, you need to make a report. Like, you need to do all this stuff. I can't tell them that if I don't do it myself. Right? Like, I've had a teenager that's in my vicinity be abused before and she immediately went to her mom her school counselors and me and like like right as soon as it happened that's and i i commended her for that that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to say something right away you're supposed to file a police report you're supposed to do everything you possibly can and when you heal which may take time then you can start sharing your story because you can't rush courage. You can't. It's like you have to wait for God's timing. And when God says, now is your time. And God is saying, now is your time for me. So that's my story on child childhood sex abuse. 
It's a rough story. It's a fucked up story. I got fucked over. Yes, I'm cussing because I'm being 100% real with y'all. This is what happened. Like, literally, all I have is my friends, my close friends, some of my family. Shout out to my godmama one time because she's been holding me down. My cousin, like, my cousin has literally been by my side since day one because she was my outcry witness. So that's, like, that's my, like, literally, we've been fighting this battle for the past 14 years. And I'm happy that now I've gained enough strength to not only, you know, get justice and tell my story, but to share it and advocate for it to where other people can come forward. You know, children, victims of abuse. I, I know victims of abuse who still haven't really quite gotten to that point to where they, you know, go to therapy or talk about their story, or even file a police report. And that's okay. The Like, everybody trying to say with the Me Too movement, like, why they wait so long again? Why they ain't say nothing before? Let me tell you something. If you're not a victim, or if you haven't experienced abuse, or sexual abuse, physical abuse, whatever, you have no opinion. Your opinion is invalid, because you cannot put yourself in that person's shoes. You have no idea how we feel. It is painful when somebody violates your body and your inner space, and which is psychological and messes with your mental and your emotions. That's a lot. And you just want to forget about it. You just want to forget about it. You're just like, you're sitting there suppressing it. You're pretending as if it didn't happen. Most people don't even realize they've been raped because they don't even know what rape is. Like, rape is considered, if you say no or if you do not give verbal consent and someone has sex with you anyway, then you were raped, period. If somebody touches you in an inappropriate way, if somebody uh, exposes themselves to you, make you do porn against your will, like, there's some, if you go on my blog, I list all of the things that are considered abuse. And guys are like, dang, you can't even look at a girl without, you know, being caused an abuser. Like, bro, that's not funny. Like, don't joke like that. It's like, yeah, I, I'm all for the Me Too movement. Like, now, for people who lying just to get money, man, that's on them. And it's sad because it messes it up for people like me who really are telling the truth. So it discredits real victims when you bullshitting and you just trying to get money. But you can't be that judge like you're you can't be the person that says oh she lying or no she not lying that's not your responsibility so i'm all for the me too movement i'm all for people calling others out like speaking their truth i don't care if it's 30 years from now baby look if you gotta say what you gotta say and you want to press charges 30 years later you press them charges because like i said it takes time to gain the courage to even do that People don't speak up because, one, they're afraid nobody's going to believe them. That's what happened to me. I held it in for a year because I'm like, bro, there's no way they're going to believe me over my stepdad. Like, this a grown man. I'm a kid. Like, you know, they think kids got imaginations. And I'm, they ain't going to believe me. Ain't nobody going to take my side. So I ain't going to say nothing. And then when I finally decide to say something, guess what happened? I didn't get believed. Nobody believed me. So what I feared was true. It happened. The number one reason why people don't say anything is because they're scared. Nobody is going to believe them. So that's the reason they're embarrassed. They think it's their fault. They feel, they feel guilty. Like maybe they had a short skirt on. Maybe they was drunk. Maybe they did this and this. They try blank. They blame themselves. They shut down. They get depressed. Like, it's so many reasons why people don't speak up. So before you go judging people or saying something about why it took so long, why she ain't say nothing before, why this and this and this, like, you don't understand. <laughs> you know, you don't understand. Like, I love Just Hilarious to death. She funny as hell. I just seen her stand up. But that was the one comment she made I wasn't fucking with. Because you cannot judge people or blame people for not speaking up right away. Do you know how much courage it takes to walk up to a police station and say, I was sexually abused? I don't know how many of us <clears throat> can't, I'm sorry, I don't know how many of y'all watch Law & Order SVU, but 
it's a TV show, but I promise you, those are real facts. Like the the victims that be coming for coming for Olivia, like bro, nah, I don't want press charges. I don't want to talk about it. Like, just leave me alone. Like, bro, leave me alone. That's really how you feel. You want to be left alone. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to, because when you're in an investigation, you're going to have to give vivid details. You're going to have to go through everything, like all the details, everything that happened from how he touched the titty to how he started, what he did. The, like, literally, that is draining, and that messes with your mental capacity. So don't blame the victim, period. If you have not been sexually abused in any form or fashion, your opinion is invalid. Okay? So you can't put yourself in my shoes. Don't put yourself in my shoes. Don't put yourself in nobody else's shoes because you don't know how we feel. So that's one thing I had to put out there. Um, secondly, I got a book recommendation. Y'all know I always got a book recommendation. Well, most times. Beginning to Heal. A first book for men and women who were sexually abused as children. This is a really good book. It's short. It's quick. It's really good. I mean, you know, if you, it's a little hard to read, but it's a really good book. And then what I specifically like in the back, they have resources. They have a chapter for supporters of survivors. And I want, like, I posted it, and I'm going to send it to my friends because this is really important. Like, you have to know as a supporter of someone who was sexual, sex, sexually abused how to handle them. And this gives you tips on what to say, what to do, like, you know, how to express the feelings, be, um, be aware of what child abuse or sexual abuse is, like, you know, make sure you don't lose yourself while you're helping that person because it can be overbearing sometimes um if you're trying to help someone who doesn't want to be helped so i really recommend this book um i'm put the link in the description and also um i have some website resources that i'm going to put in the description the mama bear effect i just found this organization they um officially in 2015 trademarked the sec the child sexual abuse awareness ribbon which is lime green i don't have a lime green shirt but trust me i just ordered like so much material and so i have on this green shirt but the mama bear effect trademarked and patent the, the official in child sex abuse awareness ribbon okay and it's on it's on my first blog if you look at the recent blog i dropped yesterday the the ribbon is on there and the link to their website also another one is darkness to light which is another um child sexual abuse awareness um website awareness it's for victims survivors advocates like they have all types of resources um and the natural the national sexual assault hotline number i'm going to put that below is 1-800-656-4673 available 24 hours a day so i'm definitely going to put that in the description as well like guys seriously if you or someone you know is experiencing child abuse or child sex abuse or sex abuse or any abuse please call that hotline number um, and of course, most people know about RAIN, you know, ra uh, Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. That's probably the number one resource for abuse victims, rape, uh, domestic violence victims, any victims of abuse or any type of abuse. So I'll put all those links in the description for you guys to visit, learn about it, support them, donate. If you can't donate money, donate your time or just go through and research. Ma the Mama Bear Effect has like material. So like I just literally bought like $50 worth of stuff. I'm talking about bracelets, buttons, all kind of stuff. T-shirts, like support. Edu they have free educational materials. Like I'm really about to get into it because not only am I a child abuse, sex a child sex abuse survivor, I have really close friends that are as well. So, you know, hopefully, it'll, some have mentioned it, some have officially spoken public, uh, but a lot of them haven't. And <clears throat> they're going to do it in their own time, and hopefully I can be a voice for them. And if they see this or if they continue to watch me, then they'll speak out 
And that goes for anybody. Like the point of advocacy and activism and the point of everything I do is to encourage people to speak out, to one, tell my truth and to encourage others to tell theirs. Because if you go on my website, the first thing you're going to see is my tagline across the top. Elements of me, the whole purpose and my God given purpose when it comes to me being a motivator and a motivation, motivational speaker is to change lives with my testimony. It's to change lives with my story. Because you'd be amazed at how much your story can impact somebody and how much your story can heal somebody or give somebody courage to say something. So I am all for it. Um, I'm going to continue the child sex, sex abuse series. I just wanted to start it, start it off with my own story. Um, but it'll be like a continuation of things like signs of child sex abuse and resources and being an adult survivor of child sex abuse, um, what to do like when it's in the family, because 93% of victims abusers or the person who assaulted you is someone you know. The number one being a family member, acquaintance, friend of the family, a school teacher, somebody in the school system, somebody that you know. So 93% of victims know their abuser and are close to their abuser and I am a part of that 93 percent my abuser was in my house my household I had to live with him even after the fact so you can't tell me that I am unforgiving because there's no way I would have been able to do that and I did it you know I acted out sexually I did I, I had the effects like, literally, I was messed up, y'all. I didn't start going to therapy until I was old. I didn't know what therapy was. I went, when I tried to commit suicide and I was in a psychiatric facility, that was the first time that I really knew what therapy was and uh, antidepressants and learn really about mental health because I didn't know about mental health. My family didn't talk about mental health. Like, my auntie just hopped on that whole mental health train. Like, this is not something that was going on back then. They don't believe in therapy. They they don't believe in, like, mental health disease. Like, what? You bipolar. You got PTSD. Like, what's that? You depressed? Like, why are you depressed? What you sad about? Uh, Because I dealt with so much shit in my life, and I don't really know how to comprehend it. And my brain obviously has a chemical balance that's not correct. I have, it's off. Okay? It's not right. And, you know, I've had people tell me in my family or close to me, like, oh, you need help. You need counseling. Like, it's time to get you some help because you're angry and you have all this. No, I'm not angry. And I, I do go to counseling. I've been going for about three years now. OK, how many times have I said on my social media that I have anxiety disorder? specifically social anxiety, which is why I don't go places. I have post-traumatic stress disorder, and I have bipolar 1 disorder, okay? I am on medication. How many times have I said that? I've repeated it, okay? How many times do I talk about my therapist on social media? If you follow me on Facebook, you know I'm always talking about Miss Alex. Like, I stay talking about my therapist, and I see a psychiatrist. So I'm getting the help I need. I need for people to get the help that they need, okay? Because mental health is important and it's real and mental health matters. And it's you need to really seek help, like go to therapy. I cannot, I can't stress that enough. And I'm telling y'all to go to therapy because I go to therapy and it works. I don't know what I would do without my therapist. Like, she keeps me level. She keeps me, she has healed me so much through this whole process. She is an advocate. And I go to an older therapist. So it's like my grandmother. It's like talking to Mill, who's not, not no longer here. And when I first met her, I was like, oh, my God, you look like my grandmother that just passed away. Like, it's insane. And my psychiatrist is super cool. So if you need any recommendations, I recommend um, Tony Alex, who is my therapist. Now, she only is taking referrals from me and her, a few of her other clients. So if you want her information, then come to me first or email me or um, drop. Y'all know I put my information in the description so you can reach out to me. Um, and my psychiatrist is Dr. Barry Griggs. 
So I'm I'm giving you my my recommendations. Like they've helped me. Another one, Camilla Thomas, um, Aliza Bokeen, Meddling in the Mental Health. Stephanie Davis is um my LP. I say my LPC because. Because she like a really close sister to me. So she does um, children and adolescence therapy. Like I recommend her. Like there's so many resources out there. If you go to the Melanin and Mental Health website, they have a list of therapists and psychiatrists that you can see that are African American. <laughs> um, because you want to get a therapist that resembles you so that they understand. That was one thing I said I wanted was a black woman and preferably an older black woman. So I got it. You know, they're, they're, come on. Y'all just not, you gotta, you gotta just don't do it. Like just, just, just do it. And like don't, don't hesitate. Like listen, I don't even have insurance. So no, no, don't let that be an excuse either. If you don't have insurance, put it in your budget. Find a way or save or do something because your mental health is important. It's more important than than going to the club or going to the bar or going to the restaurant. Girl, look, you better eat just a peanut butter jelly sandwiches and some ramen noodles and save your little coins so you can go to your therapist appointment. Even if you go once a month, once a quarter, twice a year, I don't care. Just go. And if you're in college, I'm going to give you drop some jewels on you, especially if you go to TSU. You can get counseling for free in the counseling center, in the health of uh, the, the clinic. Because I used to see Dr. Karen Cooper, who was my therapist and my counselor at TSU. So if you're a college student, you really win it because you have free resources. It's in your tuition, like you pay for it. So use the resources that you have. Also, one more thing before I go, um, I want to start a child sexual abuse support, support group. So I'm going to put a link in the description for a confidential form. If you are a victim of child abuse, a survivor of child abuse, know someone who is a victim of survivor of child abuse, please complete the form. I, it's a it's a hundred percent confidential. I'm the only person who's gonna look at it. You don't even have to put your name if you don't want to. At least just put your email and phone number so I can reach out to you. I'm going to reach out to you personally, okay? So because we really have to get like this, it's a movement. Y'all know I create movements. Like this is what I do. So I need, this is what I want to do. I need to do it, but I want to create a support group for abuse, period. Like, I love that Yoshiko of the Butterfly Project does it for domestic violence victims. So I want to do it for sexual abuse victims and child sexual abuse victims. Like, first of all, y'all not going to stop me. So it doesn't matter. You cannot listen, <laughs> but I'm going to keep you on your nerves about it. I'm going to keep talking about it. Y'all see me walk around in all lime green. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. OK, because I'm I'm living my truth and I'm living my best life because I finally, 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 finally get to speak my whole truth. And it feels wonderful. feels like a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders because I don't think about the effects and the consequences that's going to happen. The important part is God put me through a test and I'm telling my testimony. I don't I don't care what people think about it. I don't care what people say about it. I, I'm, I, if I hurt your feelings, oh well, you hurt, you hurt mine first. Like, it's just, you shouldn't have did what you did. At some point, what, what's done in the dark comes, comes out. It comes in the light. And you're gonna have to deal with the consequences regardless, because I'm out here helping people and I'm healing myself. So, with that being said, check out my next blog. Um, that will come out. My blogs are they, they come out randomly, but I'm, it's going to be blog, then vlog, blog, then vlog. So the next blog will come out, what's today, Thursday? So the next blog will probably come out sometime over the weekend. That way, from next week's video, I can follow up. So make sure you guys subscribe to my blog and to my vlog, okay? So subscribe to this YouTube channel because it's about to go down. It's about to get real. Hit that subscribe button so that you can be aware and notified every time I come out with a video. Share with a friend, like it, comment, all that. Like, send that link out. Y'all gonna send that link out, share it on your social media. Like, do whatever you gotta do. Do it all so that we can make this happen. So that is my um, episode eight on child abuse or child sex abuse awareness 
Unfortunately, it starts at home. That's the name of my blog. So be tuned. Stay tuned. Love you all. We're all strong. You're powerful. Powerful. You're a king. You're a queen. You're a conqueror. You're a survivor. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You can do this. Whatever you put your mind to and whatever you put your work and your heart into and whatever you put your faith into is going to happen. Like, go to God and make it happen. And it's all in his time. And it's all in his plan. You have to believe. You have to have faith because without my faith, I'd be nothing. So thank you again for tuning in for episode eight. We're about to make 10. Y'all are excited. Thank you again for tuning in for episode eight of Motivation With Me.